Welcome to another Demarcation Media Mega Constructs review. Today we have some more customs by Elias Kemp. Um, also today I am in my little studio because I am in the midst of moving and my big studio really can't be set up. So we are still filming and videos will still be coming out, but it will be from my little studio. Um, so I got another batch of customs sent to me by Elias Kemp, including some flood, some just normal custom painted figures, and actually some custom like builds, which I've never actually really looked at here on the channel before. So I'm curious to see these. Um, and we're gonna jump in. We're gonna start with the more normal size figures first, starting with uh, that ODST. All right, so here he is. He's got kind of an asymmetrical look going because he has only one shoulder armor. And his paintwork is blue. It's kind of showing up as purple on my camera for some reason, though, and I'm not sure why. Um, it might show up a little better in the final edit. But I am really liking this color scheme. It's very simple. It's got a lot of black. And then we've just got the pops of... Um, blue going on there and then the white or kind of light gray offsets the black really nicely and it also looks like he painted around mega's actual visor which was really clever that way it kind of saves some super fiddly work um the one thing here that uh, and i've actually i did uh, point this out to him is the sealer that he used did not react well with the paint and also maybe just isn't the highest quality because it didn't set. And so what happens when your sealer doesn't set is your figure stays vaguely sticky, like all the time. And then things stick to it. So when you're when you're painting, and this this is for literally everybody who ever paints, make sure beforehand that your paint reacts well to the sealer and also that the sealer is good enough quality so uh, it looks like he used a gloss varnish of some sort my go-to is a matte finish because a matte finish will not remain tacky i've never ever really had a matte finish remain tacky it just doesn't so if you do want to do a gloss finish and this might even be mod podge that he used here if you want to do that, my suggestion is to do a matte coat first and then put the gloss over top of that. Then you can kind of eliminate the tackiness. But yeah, that is a problem, and I have actually run into it myself before. Um, it's, a, it's an easy problem to run into, so that does hurt the figure a little bit. But the concept and the execution, for the most part, is really good, and I do like this. So next up, we have one of the Flood Combat forms. And the interesting and kind of cool thing is this is the same ODST. This is this is the guy that we just looked at or another of his squad. You can see the blue is the same and everything. So he has been infected um, or, like I said, maybe it's another member of his squad. But that's really cool. Uh, we have kind of both versions. And you can see that the shoulder armor is no longer here. It has been moved up to behind his head. I don't know even how that would happen. Also, the thing that just struck me as I was putting this guy in here is this arm, that is a saw. It's one of the guns. It's a saw that has been like bio-molded um, into his arm, and he's essentially now this weird corrupted Samus, and the gun is upside down, which makes it more interesting. There's like the, the tendrils going all around it. That's kind of super cool. And then you can see the back all broken up. There's all kinds of just crazy stuff going on. The arm here is like triple jointed. Oh, he's deciding to come off. Yeah, it's like triple jointed to get the extra flood grossness. The leg is all just one big lump. And then that is the infection form little tendrils and he has painted all but the ends to keep the red, which was very clever, I think. Uh, yeah, this is cool. I like this. I think the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The ingenuity with how this is put together, especially with that saw arm, that's just, that's not something that I've seen before from Flood Customs. And I've looked at a fair, fair handful of Flood Customs now, um, you know, Matty Crafts and whatnot, but I've never seen somebody actually mold the gun into the hand quite like this. And I think it's really unique. 
This next figure is really interesting. We've got parts from the Arbiter here, which that was the first thing that really struck me when I pulled this figure out of the box is that's the Arbiter's helmet, but I think he cut it and trimmed it down a bit, but it doesn't actually look wrong. Like it works really well somehow just as it is. And then he's painted some red on top of the silver. And then the base of this figure is actually a... Sesa Refumi, so he's got like the heretic harness. And then his sword, his sword is like a black energy sword with a red gradient on it, which the gradient is fantastic. I have not tried doing gradients myself yet, so I'm always really impressed when people can pull it off. Um, the green on the chest plate is still there. The back parts are mostly unpainted, just a little bit of black detailing. You can see here a little bit more of what I was talking about where it's like the stickiness has made things uh, kind of stick the way that you would not want them to stick. And again, that's just something to look out for as you're making customs that you're not ending up with sticky end results. But this is really cool. I don't know if it's supposed to be banished or heretic or what but the concept is really cool i like the use of parts it's a really interesting combination of figures and then the way that he's modified the arbiter helmet is super cool like i i i don't know something about that just really works for me this last figure is kind of a banished looking eod but he's got like short sleeves and that uses Call of Duty arms, which is kind of interesting. We have the banished shoulder and then the whole figure is in this dark red. However, there is a fair bit of the green still showing and this does suffer from the um, stickiness problem. So that does make it a little bit hard to handle this figure. And while the concept is cool, and I do like, especially the dry brushing over top the red, it, it's just very fragile. It's hard to do much with this guy without him, you know, his paint rubbing or whatever. But I do like the concept. I think the dark red and the black and the dry brushing is fantastic. I like the way that the vents or whatever on the side of the EOD is, um, basically that's the, the base silver there, the, the one that Mega printed on there. And I think that's pretty cool. I like how he's doing these like leaving just the little bits of um, Mega's own printing to make it work and then painting over the rest. I think that's pretty cool. I like asymmetrical Spartan armors too, so this works really well for me. It's just the um, stability of the figure is kind of in question here. Now we're moving on to the bigger things that he sent along. And this, I don't think this has any custom paint on it. I'm, I'm pretty darn sure. This is purely a pop and swap build, which is something, again, I've not really looked at on this channel. Now, if you've watched my reviews of these mechs, you kind of know how I feel about this mech system. I think it could have been done better. Um, I, I think, yeah, we have things like this is not um elias's fault at all it's just like the loose shoulder or whatever but this this is really cool this is a hand built using the decimus mech's fingers i believe and then he so he's got this giant hand he's got a spiky shoulders going on and then he has this big hammer so it's almost brute-esque in the way that it's put together and honestly it's making me think of like a space marine with this big hand it's probably because i've been looking at too many Warhammer 40K figures from Joy Toy, but there's like power fists, and that's what this makes me think of. It's like a Space Marine power fist. We have the prototype's head in there. Um, the legs are mostly normal, but this backpack is really slick. I really like the shaping of it. I like these little thrusters here, and it's a lot sturdier than the actual like official, um, the, uh, official like weapons backpack. Also, the build of this hammer is pretty interesting, too. It's incorporating those, like, UNSC green pieces while also keeping the sort of banished design. So this is really cool. I like this. I think this is a great use of parts. It's a great way to utilize the mech system to make something that is, like, interesting and unique, but also it's not even modifying the parts. This is just something you can do straight up with the base mech plus some extra pieces. And I think it's a great showcase of the pop and swap capabilities of Mega. <laughs> Once again, the blue is looking really purple for some reason. This is 
the Skyfire Max Blue, so I don't know why it's uh, showing up as so purple. I might be able to fix that in post. Um, and if I have fixed it in post and you guys are just listening to me ramble for no reason, I'm rambling to my editor self later. So this really intrigued me when I first pulled it out of the box. At first, I was like, whoa, there's a lot going on. But the more I look at it, the colors and everything are kind of really cohesive. This one does have a little bit of its own paint, like special paintwork, the gold here and the gold on the guns. That's custom paintwork. And I think he also maybe put some sealer over some parts. And there's a um, a lock. There's the buff lock in there, but like kind of not really. So this is like straight up a full custom build. The head, the head is the thing that really struck me as unique and interesting because it's not actually attached to the ball joint under there at all. He has built it onto the backpack. So then we have this kind of Transformers-esque head that still actually has a surprising amount of posability from side to side, up and down. Well, down's a little bit limited, but from the rest of it, like I, I don't even think I can really complain about that posability not being there. The main armaments here are these like ray shields almost with cannons on them there's one on each side as well as this fully built up double barrel sort of gun i like the designs of both of these nothing about them feels slapped together and uh, i don't know just like all of it feels very thought out to me some mocks i see i'm like hmm that's not a super thought out mock but this feels thought out a lot to me and then the backpack Again, great. I like how we got the vent here to kind of tie it to the vents down here. It kind of continues the slope of it. Again, this is, I mean, you could take the paintwork out, right? The, the custom paintwork here, and it would still be just as good. I would say, again, this maybe is even a better um, showcase of what you can do just by getting some Omega's parts and popping and swapping. So this, this really impresses me. And like I said, it's, there's no... There's no paintwork on the, the first one. This one has very minimal paintwork, and yet it still comes out looking really good. The head. The head really just impresses me. That That's just really cool. The cleverness of sticking it to the backpack instead of the actual torso and the fact that it still gets a lot of articulation. It looks very, like, soulless eyeball. is going to just – it has no remorse about blowing you up. It's just good. I really like this. Continuing on with the mech theme, this is a flood-infected mech-ish. So the legs are all kind of there. It's, there's mech legs in there. Uh, plating is obviously missing. There's actually a human still inside the mech, which is kind of horrifying. But the rest of this is, like, fully flood-infected. Ew, there's, like, a bundle of, like, I don't even know what that is. That's kind of horrifying. Um, it looks like this was made out of green stuff, and the paint has chipped in a few spots. But we've got the little, uh, what are these even called? The eyes, I guess, of the flood. And then this arm. Look at this arm. This is, like, so multi-jointed that it's, I don't know, there's, like, paddle hands on the end. He can kind of shrug like that. I don't know what the paddle hands would be for. Maybe smashing stuff. Um, the weight of the paddle hands for some of these joints makes it want to droop a little bit, but the amount of articulation that you get out of this is kind of horrifying. I mean, this is essentially just a ball of biomass. Oh, I'm bumping my camera here. It's a ball of biomass that has just overtaken a part of a mech and is now a walking ball of biomass that can chase you down and squash you. That's fantastic. That's That's horrifying. And the texturing on the paint really kind of sells that there's like the modeling of the lighter fleshy tones and then some brown i think it works pretty well and you can see parts of like the paint on the joints for the little flapper arms here but it being flawed i feel like that works because that most likely would literally be human arms that it's strung together so that doesn't feel that weird to me and last but not least, this is what I've kind of come to think of as the death cucumber. It is shaped kind of like a cucumber, but it's got legs. And it's got, again, these long jointed arms, but it has spikes this time, which look far more deadly and 
like much more menacing and they have way more texture on them actually this entire figure paintwork wise i think is a level up because there's like some green slime to it and then the texturing is even more in depth got more of the little feelers but all the way around there's like this green slimy look which kind of matches the newer flood that mega is doing um, and there's still a human inside that which is horrifying but yeah i think this one's even a step up let me grab the other one a step up from this one in terms of sculpting and paintwork i mean look at that that is a big jump in uh quality there and yeah this is it I imagine it wouldn't go very fast, like, right? You just lumber towards you kind of like this, and then maybe this arm would come shooting out to stab you. But, like, imagine you're going through a dark room on Zeta Halo, big dark room, and then this just comes, like, waddling out of the shadows after you. And the amount of bullets that it could take, too. Like, it would be so hard to take something this big down. Because, I mean, like, look at this. In case you weren't aware, like, that's the scale that we're working with here. It's huge, huge compared to the Mega Figures. So that would be genuinely scary, and I don't know, the something about the long, almost cucumber-like shape makes it worse. Like, that, that shape makes it more frightening. Like, the ball is not as frightening. This long shape, I don't know, something about it makes it so much worse. Well, there you have it. That is another batch of customs from Elias Kemp. And yeah, I could not fit all of the figures back in here for my end shot, but I gotta say... Um, it is really cool to get to see kind of the learning process going on here. Um, his progress is kind of leaps and bounds in terms of his paintwork. The ceiling stuff is another thing he's going to have to tackle. You know, it, it, we all have to learn these things as we're learning how to customize. And I think it's um, a really good, a really good opportunity that I can show these because uh, it's all done really well and you know we like i said we all got to learn how to go through these little challenges that pop up like for a while i was having a lot of trouble using specific type of mod podge on the paint that i was using especially on the heads it would stay sticky and i had to work through that so that's just kind of the process of learning how to make customs and just because you run into those issues doesn't make you a bad customizer i mean this all of these figures here are a testament to that because Despite having some problems of like the sealer, it, they're all still really good. The concepts behind them are really good. I really love the flood arm here. I love the concept behind this like banished looking heretic arbiter fusion. The death cucumber is great. Just all kinds of horrible texturing on it. And then this guy right here, I'm I'm just really impressed with the the ingenuity that went into that i like that design a lot the head the head attachment still just gets me it's just really good so yeah um as of right now i don't believe he posts these anywhere i don't have really links to give you to his work so right now what you see here is what he's doing um and hopefully i will be covering more of his customs in the future Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.